Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to MH Optical's YouTube page. Today we're talking about hard coding. Let's try and get people to understand what is a hard code, what gets hard coded, and what you may be actually asking for when you order a hard coat or a scratch resistant lens. Stay tuned. All right, to start the conversation about hard-coded lenses, we have to start from the lens blanks itself. Now, not all lens blanks come with a hard coating. For example, here, that little HC is representative that that has a hard coating. Now, all polycarbonate lenses are going to have a hard coating on it. Polycarbonate is such a soft material that the back of your fingernail is going to scratch the lens. So the front and the back are gonna come from the factory with a hard-coated lens. Now remember, in the surfacing process, we remove that back layer. So we always have to put a hard coating back on the poly. Now here at MH Optical, we put a backside hard coat on everything from poly and up. So polycarbonate to 174 is going to get a backside spin coating. Now we tend to use all lens blanks that have a hard coating. For example, you can see that this lens right here is an uncoated lens. Plastic or CR don't necessarily need that extra protective. Now when you talk about hard coating, you have your two options. It's your spin backside hard coating or your dip hard coating. And we'll go over to those machines now and show you what's going on. Now behind me is our Ultra Optics 44R backside spin coater. Now what does backside spin coating really mean versus a dip coat? Now a backside spin coat is only putting a hard coat on the back of the lens. So the 44R has four chambers within itself. It has a high pressure wash, which washes and cleans the lens to prep it. Then it has a dry ball, which dries the lens perfectly because we need a dry lens to put that coating on. Next is the coating, where it takes a fountain of coating, shoots it up, spins it off nice and evenly, and then the next step is a UV cured bowl. Now a spin coat is most of the time is going to be UV cured. It's fast and it's a really effective way to cure that coating. Now when using a backside spin coat, you have to make sure that you use a lens blank that has a hard coating on the front of it already. Or else you're putting a hard coat on the back, but nothing on the front. You have no uniformity in the lens. You're protecting the back, but nothing going on on the front. Now remember, all poly is always gonna have a hard coating on your lens. It always comes from the factory with a hard coating on the front, and then your lab is most likely going to spin coat it, unless it's getting a special type of AR where they'll dip coat it. Regardless, however they choose to hard coat it, polycarbonate is always getting a hard coating, or else you wouldn't be able to wear the lens. It would get so scratched so quick. So let's talk about some of the pros and cons to backside spin coating. Spin coating is fast, maybe two minutes per job. It goes in, gets washed, gets dried, coated, and it's done. Versus a hard coating where it might take up to two hours to be done. The next pro to backside spin coating is there's tintable options. You could run a variety of different coatings in these machines and they're allowed to be tintable. So if you're getting a tinted lens, most of the time it's gonna have a backside spin coat tintable hard coating. And lastly, it is a hard coating. So you are getting that backside protective with that hard coating, which will lead us into our cons is, our first con is if you are getting a backside spin coat, you're not getting the same hard coating on the front. So when you spin coat the back of a lens, we're putting our spin coat on it. Now, we don't know what the factory is using. It's a totally different process. It may be a dip, it may be a spin. Most likely it's a dip. However, it's not going to match the front from the back, which isn't always a problem. Where it comes to a problem is AR. That's when you don't have the consistency to match the stack on the front and the back. And next, a spin coat is not as hard as a dip coat. A dip coat is gonna be a harder and more durable coating. It's really gonna stand up to any kind of scratches that regular life may throw its way. Now behind me is our Satislow SCL dip coater. Now what this machine does is it does two things actually. It strips the factory hard coating that may be on the lens. Now we have different processes for uncoated lenses, but for a good majority of them, because we do a lot of poly here, we have to remove that factory hard coating. So the first couple of baths in the machine are a stripper. They strip that factory hard coating off, and then they wash and clean it until you have a naked, bare lens. Then what happens is it goes to a primer. The primer is a latex-based primer. It primes the lens into a bath, and then it goes into a couple of ovens to cure. Then next is the actual hard coating itself, 
where it dips into the hard coating and then it goes into a series of ovens till it's semi-cured. After that, it goes into a tunnel oven where it cures for another 40 minutes or so. That's what makes a dip hard coating so much better. You have uniformity with the lens. The backside and the front side match. We also have total control of this machine. We do tests every morning to determine the thickness on the lens. We know where we want it and where we need it to have optimal performance on the lens. It also allows us, since we know what the front is and we know what the back is, we can tune our AR coating stacks to match each other. That way you're getting a consistent process always when you're using a hard coating. And lastly, it's also a superior hard coating than spin coating. This is a much harder coating. Dip coating truly is a better process than spin coating. Now there are a couple cons I could think about to dip coating. Well, it takes well over two hours to go through the process. First, it has to be cleaned by hand, then it has to be loaded onto the special baskets, then the process itself to get to the end takes over an hour. After that, it has to go into our special tunnel oven, which cures it for another 45 minutes. So on hard coating alone, you're looking at over two hours, maybe more. And the other con to dip coating is there's no way you could tint it. Now you could use pre-tinted lens blanks and polarized lenses, that's no problem for the dip coater, but if you want a special gradient or you want a blue and some kind of special tint, it can't get a dip hard coat. And that goes for the ARs that are associated with dip coating, such as all the Crizals. Understand when and where you're getting a hard coat. For us, all polys and up are getting a backside spin coat. For CR, that changes depending on which AR you're getting. Every AR coating that we do needs some form of hard coat. Also, understand what your lab is giving you. Are 160s getting a hard coat? Are you getting a hard coated front blank without a backside hard coating? You never really know unless you ask your lab. Understand what your lab is giving you when you're ordering a scratch resistant coating. Are they dipping it in the machine? Are they simply pulling a hard coated lens off the shelf and putting a backside spin coat on it? That's a really good thing to know when you're ordering your lenses with a scratch resistant coat. And it all comes down to what you may need. If you need a tinted lens, you're probably gonna get a spin coated lens. That's the only way it can be tintable. In the case of poly, that's the only way to tint a polycarbonate lens is to have a tintable hard coating on it. Polycarbonate in itself is not tintable. Next thing is time. How quickly do you need the job? Understand that if your job has AR and it needs a dip coating, it's probably not making it out that day. In that case, it needs a minimum of two hour dip coat, another hour of cure time, and then the AR chambers themselves would take another hour. So that's about four hours just in the AR lab itself versus a spin coat job where it simply gets spun and then heads over to AR to go through the normal process. I hope everybody learned a little something and I shared a little knowledge and inside look in the lab on what kind of lenses get hard coating, how we apply them, just so you the consumer can understand what you're actually getting when it comes to hard coating.